Lesson number five. Your assignment will always require God's involvement. You know what it says? She says, how will this be? And the angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come upon you. Write this down. God will never give you an assignment that doesn't require him. If you can do what you're dreaming without God, you are not in God's will. If you don't need God to complete your assignment, you are not doing what God wants you to do. God will always give you something that makes him necessary. So if you are an expert, you don't need God in your life and you think that you, you know, you got everything and these humanistic people walk around saying, well, I don't need God. That means you have never found God's will for your life. God's will will always require God. In other words, God's assignment creates dependency on God. The Holy Spirit will do this. But here's something else. This is the one I like, really. Number six, you will need the right people in your life. The angel gave Mary two answers when Mary asked, how will this be? And by the way, that question is everybody's question. Am I right? You got this big dream in your mind all these years, this big dream. And you're like, how can this be? And God's answer is always two answers. One, the Holy Spirit, you need God. And two, the angel volunteered the second answer. He says, and Elizabeth is pregnant. Now, Mary asked one question. He gave her two answers. What was the question? How will this be? In other words, how will this be accomplished? That is an important question. I live by that every day. I don't know how to do what God called me to do. But God said there's two things you need to get it done. One, you need the Holy Spirit. That's God. And number two, you need Elizabeth. Who is Elizabeth? Elizabeth is an interesting woman. And now let me just say this. I want to emphasize this. Mary is asking the messenger of God. How do you bring God's will in the earth? He gave two answers. One, you need God. And two, you need Elizabeth. I mean, come on. There are millions of people in the world. Why pull out Elizabeth? Because Elizabeth is what everybody needs. Who is Elizabeth? First of all, she's an older woman. And she is beyond the age of bearing children. And she and her husband conceived. Which means she's walking around as a pregnant old woman with a miracle baby. Do you remember that story? In other words, Elizabeth represents a lot of important things. First of all, she represents someone who is older than you in the work. Secondly, she represents somebody who is advanced in pregnancy with their dream. She is six months beyond Mary. She's six months pregnant beyond Mary. So she has already gone through the morning sickness, all the bad feelings, all the changing of clothing, adjusting her apparel. She got to stay away from certain foods. In other words, she's already gone through the changes of pregnancy. And thirdly, she's already been convinced that God can do it because she has a miracle baby. In other words, when you have a dream from God, you look for people, first of all, who've already done something. Secondly, they've been through something. Thirdly, they know more than you. Fourthly, they've already achieved some success. And fifthly, they already changed their clothes. Listen, if you dumb and I dumb, both of us in trouble. You don't keep coming to folks who can't help you. If you broke and I broke, we broke. <laughs> you know, I was telling my son the other day, I said, you know, relationships are the key to life. You are as rich as the friends you have. And you are as broke as the friends you have. Can I hear an amen? That's why you want to keep coming people who got something. Because the folks who ain't got nothing can tell you they ain't got nothing. When you ain't got nothing, but you all ain't got nothing together. You want to talk to folks who got something. Can I hear an amen? Mary Elizabeth is pregnant. The way you bring God's will to pass is to find the right company who can encourage you to keep your baby. Can you imagine when that first morning sickness hit Mary? She thought she was going to die. Now, I don't know how to feel, okay? I never had no baby. But my wife had two kids for me. And only two kids in the world I got, praise the Lord. But my, my wife had two kids. And some of my wife would say, I want some ice. Lord have Jesus, amen. What's she talking about? I want some town bread. 
they say some funny things when they get married. I mean, when they get a baby. Eh? And then they have like nausea and want to bring things up. And they don't feel well. And sometimes I'm sure it goes through their mind why does this man do this to me? Anyone ever told that, ladies? Don't hold your hand up. Don't hold your hand up. Don't hold your hand up. Husband sitting right there. Don't do this. When a, when a woman gets pregnant, she thinks about this fella who did this to her. That's how we feel with God. Lord, I had a good life until you gave me this idea. This is trouble. And you need someone like this, but it's, hey, that's okay. Hang on, that's going to pass. Why? I already passed through that. Morning sickness is only temporary. You need someone to tell you that. You don't get rid of the pain because you feel bad momentarily. Because you need someone to tell you, I've been through that already. You will make it through that. I am past the morning sickness. I imagine that many times Mary will run because you know she's a young teenager. She don't know what to expect. She would run to Elizabeth and say, Elizabeth, I feel this, I feel that, I feel this. And Elizabeth would say, Well, that's what this is, and that's what that is. And in other words, she was there to explain what was going through Mary's life. You need people like that to tell you, yes, I know this seems to be tough right now, but I went through that too. Keep your baby. You need the right company. That's a great lesson we learned from Mary. Number six, number seven rather, you must believe it is possible. You know, I like what Mary says. Mary says, be it unto me. Just like you have said, an angel says, with God, all things are possible. What you were born to do seemed impossible. But God wants you to believe it is possible. Number eight, you must surrender your assignment to God's will. You know, Mary says, be it unto me just like you have said. Don't allow your intellect to interfere with God's instructions. We can become so intelligent, we can work our, talk ourselves right out of our assignment. Mary surrendered. She says, be it unto me like you have said, because I don't know how this is going to happen. So I surrender to your will. Number nine, what do we learn from Mary? You must act immediately and make decisions in keeping with your assignment. If you read the Bible, it says in Luke 1, 39, it says, immediately Mary left and went to, to, to Elizabeth. This is interesting. As soon as she accepted the dream, the assignment, she acted right away. Are you procrastinating? Are you putting it off for the last few years and what I'm going to do? Yes, I'll obey God after I get this finished, after I get that finished, after I do this. And God will say, no, I want you to do this now. Sometimes you got to leave certain environments immediately in order to fulfill God's dream. I had to cut off company when I got God's will for my life. I had to change friends immediately. I had to leave certain environments because not everybody has your interest in heart. Listen to me. I was a young teenager when I got God's vision for my life. And this is why I never drank, never smoked, never went to nightclubs. Never, do you know why? I was clear on my vision. I remember one time, my friend, I robbed him in high school. He had a beer. Boy, beer tastes bad. I know what you all who drink beer, but... Y'all, y'all need help. And me and my young, my friend, you know, he's supposed to be my friend. He bought a beer after school. And he said, man, you want some? I said, no, boy, my mom will kill me. My dad will bury me. He said, and he started drinking this thing. He said, taste some. You know me, I dare it a little bit. I taste a little bit of that. Spit every piece of it out. That tasted like bitters. I don't know how y'all just dreamed that. Not y'all, the one behind you. It was horrible. But then, while I was tasting it, I heard the voice of God. God said, if you go in this direction, you'll sabotage your dream. You'll sabotage your dream. I remember the first young lady who tried to get me to have sex with her. Yes, they did. I was handsome, good looking. And I remember, she cornered me. And here I am, famous in the visionary. She cornered me. And the Holy Spirit said to me, you, you can do this. You, you can do this. But you will sabotage your dream. 
I backed off. She called me a sissy. She in jail. I changing the world. She went to jail. Let me tell you something. You got to act quickly. You don't tell God, well, I'll change this after I get tired of it. You better act like Mary. Mary was a young teenager. She changed location quickly. She went with the right people. And that protected her. Number nine, Lisa, number ten. Move to the right environment to cultivate your assignment. The Bible says that when she left her house, she went to Elizabeth. And as soon as she entered the gate, the yard, the babies leaped in their womb. In other words, she entered the right environment. You want to be in a place where your baby continues to kick. You want to be around people who make your dream come alive. You want to be in an environment where people say, I believe in you. You can do this. It's impossible. Yes, you will. Yes, you can. You want to be in the right place so that your dream can be fertilized by the people around you. Number 11, very important. You must know your assignment adds value to others. Listen, whatever you're born to do, everybody needs it. Mary, you shall have a child. And he will save the people from their sins. In other words, even though it's a private announcement, it is a public impact. I had no idea that my life would be affecting people. I told you all last week, I stood before over two million people. They said over two million. And I was standing there as a Bahamian, still living on an island seven miles wide, talking to two million people, three different sessions. And I couldn't believe this was me. I had to pinch myself. Is this me? What if I had just settled for what other people wanted me to do? What you were born to do is public impact. It may seem small, but God's going to take you to big places. Amen? Number 12, know that your purpose is for the benefit of others. Whatever you were born to do is not for you. It's for other people. Someone asked me years ago, how do you know a vision is from God? The answer is, if your vision only profits you, it's not from God. I got a vision of a big house. That's not from God. I got a vision of a nice car, three cars in the garage. That's not from God. That's ambition. And I dream one day I'll have a $10 million in the bank. I'll play golf. That's not from God. That's ambition. A true assignment always benefits other people. God will never give you something to do that only makes you rich. He will give you an assignment to help people, to improve people, to advance other people. This is how you tell whether your dream is from God. So you can ask yourself some questions now. What am I dreaming and how does it help humanity? If it doesn't have humanity, that's ambition. Private ambition. All right, number 13. Stay in the right environment until your conception is complete. Do you know that Mary stayed with Elizabeth until she was too big to hide it? Some of you all know what I mean by that, right? Growing up in Vane's town, the worst thing that could happen to anyone was to have their daughter pregnant. You all remember them days? And they had to put girdle on. Girdle? Girdle, right? Yeah. Yeah. They put that, that elastic thing, girdle on them, to try and hide the baby for years. For years? <laughs> and you can always tell when someone's in trouble. All of a sudden, the whole neighborhood was sip sipping. Anybody know about that? Child, she looked a little stout. You remember that, man? Yeah, she don't look right. I saw her too, boy, at the store. That not look like she's she hiding something. Mary went through that. Because you see, Mary had problems. She was born in a pure family. She was, she was engaged to a pure guy. And now she's pregnant. And the whole community is only 11 houses and one street, according to archaeology, archaeologists. Nazareth with one street, 11 houses. I mean, everybody know everybody. How's she going to hide this baby? What does God do? God takes her away to Elizabeth, who also got sip sip on her. Let's be honest now, right? Your mother, 90, and she got a baby. Now you know we can talk about that, eh? 
so, so Elizabeth already been through the criticism and everything, all in the sip sip, so she can handle that. See? So here comes Mary saying, I got baby. <laughs> Elizabeth said, Child, I know what you're going through. And that's why Elizabeth said to her, Blessed is he, she who comes in the name of the Lord. You are blessed, she says. What an encouragement that must have been to her after the questions she had. She had to hide with Elizabeth for six months. In other words, she grew with her dream in the presence of somebody who didn't attack her, who didn't criticize her, who didn't tell her it can't be done, and you are disgrace. You need to be around people who say, listen, no one else believes you, but I do. She was in the right place and she stayed there until she was so convinced and so big that she had to come back home leaning backward. Come back home like this. Can you imagine say, you see Mary? Yeah, you all see me. She, in other words, you got to get to the point where your dream is so big, they can talk whatever they want to talk. You believe it's going to happen anyhow. Stay in the right environment until you are complete with your conception. Yes? Look at number 14. Know the relocation and the change is related to your assignment. You got to know that when you change relo your location, it's related to your assignment. Put it this way. If you got a big dream, you don't want to keep company with small dreamers. In other words, make sure your relocation is good for your dream. Some of you are in jobs right now, and God says, stay on this job. Why? There's some things you have to learn from this job to help you with your dream. Yeah, but this ain't what I want. God says, no, it, it ain't the salary right now. It's the environment I want you to be in. I want you to learn to meet some people, get some networking, get some contacts, stay here for a while. Why? Because this environment is good for your dream. Mary didn't live with Elizabeth all of her life, but she stayed there long enough until that dream was conceived and believed. She was convinced of it, and she felt that she was accepted. You have to watch your relocation. Welcome to the prayer for forgiveness, renewal, and repentance. This is simply a video I've put together where I like to pray for anyone within the sound of my voice. All I ask you to do is to agree with me as we seek our Heavenly Father together. Please continue to meditate on this prayer for yourself. Speak it daily or listen to this video over and over again. And allow the Word of God concerning forgiveness, renewal, and repentance of sins to reach deep into your spirit. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we gather together here online and come into agreement in the wonderful and powerful name of Jesus. Where two or more are gathered, there you shall surely be. And anything we agree upon is touching, you will surely do. The Bible says that if there's any unforgiveness, that it should be dealt with before praying. Therefore, we release any anger, bad feelings, resentment, or any other wrong attitude before you now. We lay it at your feet and we release and forgive those who have wronged us. I lift up those watching this video and we come into agreement and lift up forgiveness, renewal, and repentance. Father, your word says that if we ask for mercy and for forgiveness, you will forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Purely on the basis of the promises of forgiveness in your word, with all feeling aside, we believe that the listener is forgiven. Humbly they come before your throne to receive this grace and mercy. Help the listener to forgive themselves and let the past go. We declare in agreement that Jesus is Lord over the listener, and if they believe in their heart that you raised him from the dead, they will be saved with heaven being their eternal home. We receive it. And we praise you, Father. Help the listener's unbelief. Their slate is wiped clean right now. In the face of any feeling of guilt and unworthiness, the listener receives their forgiveness from you. The guilt is for leaving and the sin is removed because of your love for them. You have forgiven their sins completely. They are blessed. God in heaven, you have forgiven them because of what Jesus has done. It is not about what they do or don't do. It is by grace through faith that they have forgiveness. They cannot earn it, but you have freely given forgiveness to them because they asked. Praise the Lord. Renew them right now by your spirit in Jesus' name. We speak refreshing over their mind, will, emotions, and body right now in Jesus' name. You, Father, are holding nothing against them. You, Father, are not holding anything back from them. You chose the listener in Christ before the foundation of the world that they should be holy and blameless in your sight. Thanks be to you. In Jesus, they have redemption, deliverance and salvation through his blood, the remission, forgiveness of their offenses, shortcomings and trespasses in accordance with the riches and the generosity of your gracious favor. 
Father, the listener has received your son, Jesus. They believe in his name. Through Jesus, you have given them the right to become your child. Thank you for forgiving them entirely and absolving them from all guilt. They are more than conquerors through the blood of Jesus. They are set free from the past in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Welcome to the Prayer for Salvation. This is simply a video I've put together where I'd like to pray for anyone within the sound of my voice. All I ask you to do is to agree with me as we seek our Father God. Choosing to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior is the most important decision you will ever make. Remember, it's not about how you feel after you pray. When the Bible says it, that settles it, and God promises to save you when you ask. God's word promises, If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. By his grace, God has already done everything to provide salvation for you, regardless of your past. Your part is to simply believe and receive. So the very moment you commit your life to Jesus Christ, the truth of his word instantly comes to pass in your spirit. And when you're born again, there's a brand new you. Pray out loud after me. Jesus, I confess that you are my Lord and Savior. I believe in my heart that God raised him from the dead. By faith in your word, I receive salvation now. Thank you for saving me. I am now reborn. I am a Christian, a child of Almighty God. I am saved. Thank you, Jesus.